Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, Daniel here with another video. So we're continuing our look at the A to Z of aircraft of the Second World War. In the previous video, A, we looked at the Albert Anson. Today we are looking at the letter B. So for the letter B, there were a number of aircraft that we could have looked at, such as the Bristol Beaufort. But instead, today what we are looking at is B for Blenheim. The Bristol Blenheim was a British light bomber designed and built by the Bristol Aeroplane Company which was used extensively during the early years of the Second World War. Development began with the Type 142 Civil Airliner in response to a challenge from Lord Rothmere to produce the fastest commercial aircraft in Europe. The Type 142 first flew in April 1935 and the Air Ministry, impressed by its performance, ordered a modified design as the Type 142M for the Royal Air Force as a bomber. In September 1935, an initial contract for 150 aircraft was placed. The Air Ministry had chosen to order the Type directly from the drawing board, having been urgently sought as one piece of a wider and rapid expansion of the RAF. The first aircraft built of this production model, K7033, served as the only prototype and on the 25th of June 1936 made its maiden flight from Filton. On the 10th of March 1937, production deliveries to the RAF formally started with 144 Squadron becoming the first squadron to receive the Blenheim. In September 1939, the Blenheim Mark I equipped two home-based squadrons and 11 overseas squadrons in locations including Egypt, Aden, Iraq, India and Singapore. On the day that war was declared on Germany, a Blenheim N6215, piloted by flying officer Andrew McPherson, was the first British aircraft to cross the German coast to perform a high-altitude reconnaissance mission upon the German Navy, the Kriegsmarine, in the vicinity of Wilhelmshaven. On the morning of the 4th of September, 15 Blenheims of two group RAF Bomber Command attacked pocket battleship Admiral Shea in the Schilling Roads at lower level and succeeded in scoring four hits. Fortunately for the crew of the Admiral Shea, none of the bombs exploded while five of the Blenheims were lost on the raid. On 11th of March 1940, a Blenheim P4852 became the first RAF aircraft to sink a U-boat, having scored two direct hits on U-31 in the Schilling Roads. In May 1940, Blenheims participated in the Battle of France, being sent against German forces moving towards Brussels, resulting in many aircraft quickly sustaining heavy damage or being lost to enemy fire. German attacks upon the French airfields also damaged a considerable number of Blenheims on the ground. On the 14th of May, a combined force of fairy battles and Blenheims were dispatched on a counter-attack upon German forces as they broke through defensive lanes. During this operation, 40 of the 71 aircraft dispatched were lost. This is claimed to be the highest ever losses known to the RAF. Further action by Blenheims of Bomber Command that day sustained a 25% loss despite a high level of British fighter cover. Rapid advances in technology, which had taken place during the late 1930s, had rendered the Blenheim mostly obsolete by the outbreak of war. Despite this, Blenheim squadrons were still in immediate and high demand after the withdrawal from France as part of the British action during the Norwegian campaign. Typically operating from bases in the northern areas of the British mainland, such as RF Lossiemouth, flying for extended periods over the North Sea led to the weather posing almost as much of a risk as enemy combatants, particularly as most of the Blenheims lacked any heating or de-icing systems. In response to this, some aircraft were later equipped with boilers fixed into the starboard engine exhausts. A sizable number of losses were incurred during the campaign in Norway due to both enemy action and mid-air engine failures due to icing. Blenheim units also operated throughout the Battle of Britain, often taking heavy casualties, although they were never accorded the publicity of the fighter squadrons. From July to December 1940, Blenheims raided German-occupied airfields, both in daylight and at night. 
Although most of these raids were unproductive, there were some successes. On the 1st of August, 5 out of 12 Blenheims sent to attack Brussels were able to bomb the airfield, destroying or heavily damaging three BF 109s of GAG 27. There were, however, also some missions which produced an almost 100% casualty rate amongst the Blenheims. One such operation was mounted on 13 of August 1940 against the Luftwaffe airfield in Aalborg, northwestern Denmark, by 12 aircraft of 82 Squadron. During this operation, one Blenheim returned early, the pilot of which was later charged on account of lacking moral fibre, but was killed on an operation before a court-martial was held. The other 11 aircraft, which reached Denmark, were shot down. Five were lost by anti-aircraft fire, with six falling to the guns of BF-109s. Blenheim units had also been formed to carry out long-range strategic reconnaissance missions over Germany and German-occupied territories. In this rule, the Blenheims once again proved to be too slow and vulnerable against Luftwaffe fighters and they took constant casualties. From the 5th of September 1940, Blenheim's Bomber Command began a bombing campaign targeting German-occupied ports along the English Channel, alongside heavier bomber types. Bomber Command Blenheims also performed anti-shipping patrols due to Coastal Command's own strike squadrons being heavily depleted throughout the latter half of 1940. While used by Bomber Command, the Blenheim was also used by RAF Fighter Command. Around 200 Mark I bombers were modified into Mark I F long-range fighters, seeing service initially with 600 Auxiliary Air Force Squadron based at Hendon. 600 Squadron began taking delivery of the Mark I F in September 1938. By 1939, at least seven squadrons were operating the Blenheim as fighters, increasing to approximately 60 squadrons within a few months. The Mark 1F proved to be slower and less manoeuvrable than expected, and by June 1940, daylight Blenheim losses caused concern for fighter command. As such, the Mark 1F was relegated mainly to night fighter duties, where No. 23 Squadron, which had already operated them at night, soon relegated them to night intruder operations as they were not effective as night fighters. While the Mark 1F was relegated to night fighter duties and into night intruder operations, as they were not effective as night fighters, in the night fighter rule, the Blenheim did incur some success. During a German bombing raid on London on the 18th of June 1940, Blenheims accounted for five German bombers, thus proving that they were better suited to night fighting than day fighting. On the 11th of June 1940, hours after Italy's entry into the war on Germany's side, Several Blenheim Mark IVs bombed Italian positions. In mid-1940, reinforcement ferry routes were established throughout Africa, starting in Takaradi on the Gold Coast. By the end of 1940, a total of three RAF squadrons equipped with Blenheim Mark IV aircraft were performing anti-shipping, bombing and reconnaissance missions in support of Allied ground forces in North Africa. In July 1941, it had been recognised that in response to the increasing intensity of combat in North Africa and in the Middle Eastern theatres, additional squadrons were urgently required. In the latter half of 1941, several Blenheim squadrons were flown out to Malta, mainly being stationed there into early 1942, before mainly being absorbed into the Western Desert air operations. As Bomber Command gradually took Blenheims out of the Northern European theatre, they were often dispatched to other areas such as North Africa. Upon the outbreak of the war in the Pacific in December 1941, some Blenheim squadrons in the Middle East were relocated from that theatre to the Far East in response to the new threat from the Japanese. In the Far East, many Blenheims were lost to Japanese fighters during the Malayan campaign in the battles for Singapore and Sumatra. By that point, the traditional daylight light bomber rule was more effectively carried out by suitable fighter bombers and the surviving examples of Blenheims were relegated to training duties. Nevertheless, the Blenheim played a role in preventing India from falling and in recapturing Burma, destroying over 60 aircraft on the ground in raids on Bangkok early during the campaign. The Blenheim would be replaced in Bomber and Fighter Command service by the faster and more heavily armed Bristol Boer Fighter in 1940-1941. Despite this, Blenheims continued to operate widely in many combat rules until around 1943, equipping RAF squadrons in the UK and in British bases in Aden, India, Malaya, Singapore and the Dutch East Indies. 
Gradually relegated to training duties, the Blenheim was eventually retired from RAF service in 1944, although Finland would continue to operate the Blenheim until 1958.